They say you shouldn't run before you can walk, but I think this guy might just beg to differ. If that sight has left you baffled, we'll just keep treading water to find out exactly what's going on here along with a whole load of more amazing sights. From dancing robot dogs to vampire worms, join me once again as we take a trip through some more things you will see for the first time in your life. At some point, just about everyone on Earth has dreamt of boarding a rocket and zooming off into outer space. While accessibility to space travel for everyone, not just egotistical billionaires, feels far, far away, thankfully, astronauts are more than happy to share the sweet delights that come with space travel. While on board the International Space Station in 2019, Canadian astronaut David St. Jock demonstrated the bizarre way honey behaves in a zero-gravity environment. Check it out. Out of the jar, this honey looks pretty alien, twirling and whirling around itself to the delight of us and David. In the absence of gravity, crumbs fly freely and clog up machinery. So, thanks to its gloopy texture, honey is an ideal food to pack for space travel. This is one of many reasons that I for one would be completely useless in space. Instead of tending to mission-critical tasks, I'd just want to play with the honey. If you believe what you see in movies, you might assume quicksand is a monstrous living creature that devours its victims into a bottomless pit never to be seen again. But let's see what really happens when someone sinks into quicksand. In reality, quicksand isn't quite the frightening force of nature that you see on the big screen, and you can learn how to escape it eh, pretty easily. This quicksand escape demonstration is part of a tour of Mont Saint-Michel, a tidal island in Normandy, France, that proves it's much easier than you think. You see, quicksand is a natural mixture of sand and water that looks solid but acts as a liquid when pressure is applied. As you sink into quicksand, your body weight pushes water out of the sand and deeper into the ground. Without water, the sand thickens into its more solid state and creates a vacuum that sucks you down. The good news is that, unlike in movies, quicksand is very rarely more than a few feet deep, which means it would be highly unlikely that anyone larger than a child would disappear underneath. If you do get stuck, it's time to get some movement going again. Instead of trying to pull yourself straight up and out of your sandy cage, the best route for escape is to wriggle your leg back and forth to create room for the water to return to the sand encasing your legs, allowing you to move them more easily. Once you've got one leg free, it's best to place your knee flat on the slightly more solid surface around you to prevent you from sinking again. This also provides a solid leverage point, as lying your leg flat creates a much broader surface area than just your foot. Then with a bit of pushing and pulling, the other leg should come out the exact same way as the first. Forget movie magic, we're taking solid science for a spin. While we may prefer to lie on solid ground, let's check out a creature that loves nothing more than sinking into the muddy depths of coastline sand. Well, this is a sandworm, and this has two fangs, and it does bite. There's the fangs right there. Got to be careful, they'll get you. There they are. 
the fangs of a sandworm. While this may look like an alien predator straight out of a science fiction movie, this bizarre fanged creature is way more common than you'd think. Sandworms make up a large part of the sea bait industry, being used as bait for fishing. The segmented worms live in the sandy mud at mid to low water levels and burrow down into the sand on beaches all over the world. They submerge their bodies, which usually range from 4 to 16 inches long, and hunt for other sand-dwelling worms, as well as microscopic mollusks and crustaceans using their fearsome fangs. Thankfully, unlike their fictional counterparts featured in the Doom franchise, real sandworms don't eat humans. Though those fangs can painfully pierce human skin if you don't handle them carefully. Though, I don't know about you, but with an unfriendly appearance like that, I'm quite happy not handling them at all. From under sand pincers to underground performances now, the commute to and from work or school can be a real slog at the best of times, especially on the hot and stuffy subway. But in April 2017, passengers of the New York subway got quite the welcome distraction from a very talented pair as they waited for their train. Check this out. While it's unclear whether this talented cellist settled down to wait for his train ride home and encountered a wild violinist by chance, or whether their subway encounter was pre-planned, it was certain that they treated the surrounding commuters to an incredible across-the-tracks rendition of Presto Movement 3 from Summer in Antonio Vivaldi's Four Seasons. While this cross-track string duel took place at 14th Street Station, this performance was sure to uplift any lucky passenger to witness it right until the end of the line. I know I'd be more happy to miss my train for this secret subway song. They say home is where the heart is, but one California resident learned the hard way that home can also be where the heart skips a beat when he found an extremely unexpected guest waiting for him after he arrived home one day. Hey, where's Ditka? Ditka? Clearly, at least one of the three bears Goldilocks met has grown tired of porridge. Snout deep in a bucket of KFC, this big-bellied bear didn't even look up when John Holden came through the already open door in October 2021 and it was clear that the grizzly had found what it came for. Quite the reverse Goldilocks situation, this furry burglar had certainly got his bearings around John's Sierra Madre home and made quite the mess in search of the colonel's finest. Luckily, it looks like this Kentucky Fried Grizzly was too full for a delicious dessert of man meat, and John lived to tell the tale. And more importantly, capture the footage to allow us to feast our eyes on this tasty home invasion. The bear departed soon afterwards following some loud noise from John, and who can blame him? After a big meal, the last thing I want is someone screaming in my ear. While well, all that bear seemed to want was a bucket of chicken, this next clip blurs the line between predator and prey in a different way, with all the confidence afforded by a thick layer of glass. This peaking Polly is Oscar, an Indian ringneck parrot who lives in Christchurch, New Zealand, and while watching him play peekaboo with a neighbor cat might seem innocent enough, think again. 
While Peekaboo might be Oscar's idea of a harmless game, he's probably not aware that if it weren't for the glass, he'd likely be winding up as a fresh parrot lunch, to go, as indicated by the cat's twitching tail and intense stare. Thankfully, Oscar's pure-hearted performance is allowed to continue for another round. I just hope he doesn't get the misguided confidence to take his act outside. While Oscar the Parrot gets his kicks from taunting a hungry cat, this next critter takes fun and games to a whole new level. This is Rocky, a giggly little squirrel who loves nothing more than a game of tickle wrestling with her adoptive human mom. While most squirrels you see in trees are a little skittish, this eight-month-old fuzzball can't get enough of her mama's tickles, continually coming back for more and more. Intriguingly, videos like this of friendly squirrels who are accustomed to human touch emitting giggling sounds have been shared across the web a surprising number of times. While there's no scientific consensus yet on whether squirrels actually laugh, their rodent cousins rats have been observed to admit high-pitched laughter-like squeaks of joy during playtime and when tickled in sensitive spots like their bellies. So next time you pass a squirrel, tell it your best joke and let me know if it gets a laugh. And find out about that squirrel sense of humor for yourself. Just avoid nut-based jokes, I'm sure they've heard them all. Enough with the laughs. Let me show you something seriously amazing. Yeah. That's cool. So cool. These are a group of weaver ants captured on camera in Thailand by traveling Englishman Brad Wishart. Shared on his Instagram, Travel with Brad. What makes these bugs' lives especially unique are their unusual nesting behaviors. While most ant colonies make their nests in the ground, weaver ants are known to construct great big leafy canopies way up in the treetops. Despite being so small, weaver ants implement a big brain approach when building their leaf nests and organize themselves into groups responsible for different construction tasks. First, Worker ants will act as hooks, biting into a leaf with powerful mandibles while hanging on with their back legs to the edge of another leaf. Then the hook ants will pull the leaves together before another group of workers comes in to glue the leaves together using a special sticky silk that is produced from their larvae. Smaller nests are usually constructed with just one or two leaves. But there are some larger nests made up of 300 leaves altogether. A brilliant ant demonstration of how teamwork makes the dream work. I just hope each one of these little guys know just how important ant they really are. Yeah, I'll show myself out. Admit it, we all love a day spent at the water park. There's nothing quite as fun as ripping down a water slide at blistering speeds. But as you're about to see, you might not even need a water park to enjoy the fun of a water slide. Forget water parks, this guy just found us a free and all natural super splash park. Ha ha! Ha ha! <laughs> I'm victory is mine! Oh! oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the man behind this slip and slide adventure is Jesse St. Louis, who discovered these natural water slides whilst trekking across New Zealand in 2021. Filmed in several breathtaking locations across New Zealand, including Mount Aspiring National Park, Rear Rock Slides, and Abel Tasman National Park. 
Jesse posted a compilation of his free-flowing adventures on his YouTube channel. While it might seem like pure, unadulterated fun, you can guarantee that a few scrapes and bruises from the unmodified surfaces are all part of the admission to these natural flumes. Even so, you can't deny being surrounded by the wonders of nature certainly beats splashing down into a pee-filled public pool. Jesse intends to make his very own unique splash all over the world, as he's made it his mission to seek out the best natural water slides in every country. And I thought YouTube was a fun job. As we've seen, exploring the wilderness can see you finding some true hidden gems. But let's just say that not all of them are guaranteed to be completely natural. When Dylan Schilt was exploring the snowy places of Wyoming in 2021, he stumbled across something rather odd, an abandoned GoPro. By the looks of it, this GoPro had been sitting in the snow for quite some time, but miraculously was still in working order. Dylan probably wasn't quite sure what he expected to see, but after recharging the GoPro back at camp and checking out the footage, he was presented with a truly hairy scene. To Dylan's amazement, this abandoned GoPro had become a Wild Beast's very own vlog show. Not only did this hulking black bear somehow manage to turn on the GoPro, presumably by happening to bite down the record button, but it did a pretty good job of filming itself playing with it too. In an attempt for further examination, either to get a taste of the curious little human-scented object that appeared in its territory, or to get a perfect vlogging angle, the bear repeatedly encased the camera inside its sloppy jaws. Unsurprisingly, it seemed to find that it wasn't too tasty and abandoned the camera soon after, leaving behind a POV shot experience of what it might be like to be eaten by a bear. I'd say this video certainly beats the real thing. While that curious creature was more than happy to pose for the camera, one bashful buck found himself unintentionally caught on camera, scaring himself half to death in 2019. After psyching himself up for a bucking good fight in some Ohio woodlands, he got the surprise of his life when he went in for the first hit. Turns out his stoic nemesis was actually a plastic decoy deer. He must have walked away from that fight feeling like the toughest buck in the land, able to decapitate his enemies with a single warning push. One hit KO. Although fleeing in terror at one's own actions isn't usually the mark of a tough guy. From one guilty exit to a very proud arrival now, I think everyone wishes they had a way to get home faster after a hard day's work. But have you ever considered reaching your bedroom like this? This cat was captured taking a sneaky shortcut home back in May 2007. Far from having no way home, this spider cat made short work of the highly grippable stucco walls to get safely back to the arms of its owner. With this clingy kitty's claws clearly in super sharp tip-top working order, I can't help but wonder what its owner's furniture must look like. Either way, as one commenter on the YouTube video so succinctly puts it, I have come to believe that cats can literally do anything. Me too, pal. Me too. At risk of angering any major cat fans out there, they do say that dogs are a man's best friend. But is that still true for the unusual pooch up next who can do a lot more than just climb a wall? Well, take a look and decide for yourself. <laughs>
Well, not a real dog, this little guy can dance to perfect choreography, no pooper scooper required. This computer canine, dubbed Spot, is the creation of Boston Dynamics, an engineering and robotics design company based in Massachusetts, costing a barking $75,400 per cyber pup. This robot is a different kind of man's best friend, as it's designed to be a highly mobile assistant with the ability to carry out physical tasks. While Spot's abilities are both cool and dystopian in equal measure, his stint as a cheerleader alongside Missouri University's Golden Girls Squad is one of his most impressive demonstrations of skill. To get Spot trained up for the occasion, students and faculty from the school's College of Engineering coded around the clock to sync the bot's movements with the cheerleader's choreography. While not exactly the cuddliest of companions, this little guy is a megabyte and no bark and most certainly knows how to steal the spotlight. While robot dogs are definitely cool, they're never going to provide the love and companionship that comes from a real animal, and there's one man out there who takes caring for crazy critters to a whole new level. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you the most wholesome content you'll see today. Today we have a little guy that was uh, that was orphaned, and if you come on in real close, I'm going to show you all the little neat things about him, and then we're going to get into how to take care of him and uh, and the rest. So check this little baby boy out. Uh, you see these little little markings around his nose? That's basically the fingerprint of the kangaroo. Every one of them is different. No two of them are the same, and that stays with them their entire life. That's right. It's a real baby kangaroo. This is Ben Christie, or as he likes to be known, Uncle Farmer Dad Ben, founder and owner of the Urban Rescue Ranch, an animal sanctuary in Waco, Texas. Ben's pad has been home to all sorts of exotic animals that come to the ranch in need of help, including ostriches, rheas, an armadillo, as well as, of course, a baby kangaroo. Known as Da Baby around the ranch, yes, as in the rapper, Da Baby, this bouncing baby came to the urban ranch rescue after sadly being orphaned at just seven months old. Thankfully, he's found a great new papa in Ben and made a hopping start to his new life on the farm back in December 2020. It takes a kangaroo around 300 days to be able to fully live outside of their mom's pouch, so the baby spent a lot of time in a fluffy sack that doubled as a cozy kanga pouch. For food, Ben opted to nurse the baby with a goat milk formula, using a baby bottle complete with an extra long teat suitable for marsupials. A true animal uncle, Ben can always be seen with at least one of his critters in tow, and even that little possum looks more than comfortable furled around Ben's neck when he feeds the baby. Kangaroos can't be house trained, so the baby sported a super cute little diaper until he grew big enough to live safely on his own outside on the ranch. Since his arrival, the baby comes on leaps and bounds and is continuing to stay with Ben and friends as of 2022. While it is legal to own a kangaroo in some places in the USA, including where Ben is in Texas, I'd recommend leaving things to experts like Ben, as his goal is not to keep the baby as a pet but to find him a new home where he can roam freely on wide open land as soon as possible. If you thought the baby the kangaroo was the cutest thing you've ever seen, this next clip is going to blow your mind. This baby capuchin monkey went through quite a swing of emotions when he saw himself reflected in a mirror for the very first time at a rescue center in Peru. Perplexed by the magic-seeming mirror, this curious George even peeked around the back to see if another monkey was hiding back there. This curiosity doesn't come from nowhere, though. 
as, in fact, the capuchin is among the most intelligent species of monkey in the tropical regions of Central and South America. While there's no scientific consensus as to whether capuchins fully recognize themselves in mirrors, studies suggest they're certainly aware there's something peculiar or special about the monkey that stares back at them from these shiny magic boxes. These brain boxes need a lot of mental enrichment activities for their development and well-being. And that's exactly what this mirror is for, as well as practicing posing for all the monkey suitors whose hearts he's inevitably going to break when he grows up and gets back to the wild. From staring into the looking glass, now to feeling like you've just stepped through it. Many people assume magic doesn't exist, but if that's the case, then how do you explain this? In December 2018, in Kangaskala, Finland, Mika Sagulin successfully ran on water. Well, kinda. You see, Mika really is running on water, just with a layer of extra support. Lake Ukiyarvi is quite small compared to other lakes nearby, measuring at around 1500 by 500 feet, and so freezes over quickly in the winter. It was also those four inches of ice on Ukiyarvi that proved thick enough to support a man. And thanks to a showering of rain leaving a shallow layer of reflective liquid water on top, looked completely crystal clear. With Mika's background in track and field, it was a perfect combination for a slippery sprint to the finish line. And with that tremendous speed, it thankfully meant he didn't have long enough to think much about how cold it was, nor whether his spiked running shoes would keep their grip all the way across. If that icy escapade has your brain well and truly frozen, you might be able to relate to the t-shirt in the next clip. After dousing a luminous green shirt with water and taking it outside, Stevie found that the winds were so icy that they were able to freeze this shirt completely solid. This ice armor was created in North Dakota by resident Stevie G, who loves nothing more than standing out in the freezing cold terrain of White Shield, where in winter, wet clothing can freeze in mere minutes in sub-zero temperatures. As the wind blows its freezing gusts through the billowing shirt in the video, the water molecules in the shirt losing enough kinetic energy to become stably bonded together, and the garment becomes locked rigidly into position. And while I wouldn't fancy standing outside in freezing conditions, this snow shirt could definitely come in handy on a sweltering hot summer's day. Ah, refreshing. Until it all melts and you end up looking like a soggy, sweaty mess, that is. Do you have any incredible videos you think people would like to see for the first time in their life? Let me know down in the comments below, or shoot me an email at stories at bmaze.com for the chance to be featured in the next episode with a shout out. And as always, thanks for watching.